Hey guys, welcome back to the Dan and Medical series. This is your girl Nikki and today we'll be talking about muscles, the origin and insertions of some key muscles of the pectoral girdle, basically the upper limb muscles. So this are, these are my cartoons and I'm going to use this one to show the muscles and this one to show the attachments and so on. So let's start. So the first muscle is the pectoralis major. So this is our pectoralis major right there. It's a big muscle and it arises from two places. So it has a clavicular head and a sternal head. So the clavicular head is from the medial. So it's from the medial half of the anterior surface of the clavicle. And when we talk about the clavicle, we say it's a collarbone and medial means it's close to the midline so this is your midline where your sternum is so anything closer to your midline is medial far away from your midline is lateral so this is the the clavicular head arises from the medial half of the anterior surface of your clavicle anterior means in front posterior means behind so that's the clavicular head and the sternocostal head arises from the lateral half of the anterior surface of your manubrium. Remember I told you that this is your manubrium of your sternum. So that's where you get your sternal head. Okay, so remember the pectoralis major has a clavicular head and a sternal head and it goes to insert, guess where? In your humerus. So it goes to insert in the lateral lip of the bicipital groove of your humerus. So remember I told you that lateral is anything away from the midline. So the lateral lip is right here. So you can see it goes all the way around here to insert somewhere around there on your humerus. And here is your lateral lip. Right, so the innervation for your break, uh, your pectoralis major is from your brachial plexus. So it arises from, uh, it gets supplies from your lateral and medial pectoral nerves, and it's the only muscle of the upper limb that is supplied by all segments of your brachial plexus. So if you're not sure what the brachial plexus is, please check out our video on brachial plexus so you can have a better understanding. And the next muscle I want to look at is pectoralis minor. So some muscles won't show on my cartoon because they're under another muscle so I'll just give you guys a pop-up of that muscle so the pectoralis minor is under the cover of pectoralis major and it arises from the third fourth and fifth rib so third for this first rib second rib, third fourth and fifth rib so it arises from these three ribs and it goes to insert in the coronoid coracoid sorry coracoid with a c coracoid process of your scapula so it goes to insert in the coracoid process of your scapula so this is the coracoid process of your scapula the acromion is a high one the one below is a coracoid process so that's your pectoralis minor which is under the cover of pectoralis major and it gets supplies from the lateral and medial pectoral nerves right very good so the next muscle is the subclavius muscle and subclavius muscle arises from i can't see it on my specimen either so i'm going to tell you guys and give you guys a pop-up just the same from the first costochondral junction of the first rib so right about here it will arise and it will go to insert on the subclavian groove of the inferior surface of your clavicle so this is the superior surface above inferior means below so when you turn over your clavicle you can see the inferior surface so it's like underneath and there's a groove there like a line or a depression the subclavius muscles travels from here to there to inserts right in your subclavian groove and guess what it's super easy to remember because the nerve supply to the subclavius muscle is the nerve to subclavius so that is super super easy and another muscle that I want to tell you guys about is the trapezius muscle 
So look at that. The trapezius muscle is super big. It's a very big muscle and it has quite a number of origins and insertions. So the trapezius muscle is basically originating from the medial third of your superior nuchal line. So the superior nuchal line, let me try to find that on my skeleton. Coming from the posterior, the back of the neck here, and it goes to the, goes. it also goes from the spine of the C7 vertebra. So look, so it comes from here to about here. So you can see that right here. So I'm just show, showing you how it travels. So here to about right here. And then it also extends from the spinous process of the 12 thoracic vertebras. So look, it travels here all the way here. I hope you guys can see that. So it travels here all the way to your 12th thoracic vertebra. So from here to about here and you can see it spreading across you see right so those are the insertions so origins here all the way to the 12th thoracic vertebra and the insertions now let me tell you about the insertions it has upper fibers and lower fibers right so the upper fibers inserts in the posterior bar the posterior border of the lateral third of your clavicle so remember lateral is out here so the posterior is from behind so we're looking from the skeleton from behind so it inserts here right there and you can see that clearly right here it goes to insert there that's for the upper fibers and the middle fibers um insert in the border of the acromion the border of the acromion remember we said the acromion is the highest point of your scapula so it inserts there the medial border of your acromion and the superior lip of the crest of the spine of your scapula so here is the spine of your scapula so right about here it will insert here the acromion these are for the middle fibers so the crest of your scapula as well as your acromion and that's it for the origin and insertion of your trapezius muscle so if you know where the muscles are it's very easy to know their origin and their insertions so the supply of this muscle is from the Spinal part of the accessory nerve C1 and C1 through to 5 and branches from the cervical plexus. Remember, it arises from here, the neck region, so it gets some supplies from the cervical plexus. So the next muscle I want to tell you guys about is latissimus dorsi. So latissimus dorsi is a very big muscle. You can see it right there and it arises from the back there. So it arises from the spinous process of T7 to L5 vertebra. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So T7 all the way to your lumbar vertebras. So can you see that? Right. So from about here to about here. So that's where it arises from. It also arises from the thoracolumbar fascia as well as the angle of the scapula. So the angle of the scapula, the outer lip of the ilia crest, and the outer lip of the ilia crest. So it arises from T7 vertebra, it's highlighted right here, all the way to L5, all of your lumbar vertebras. It also arises from the thoracolumbar fascia, also arises from the inferior right here, the inferior angle of your scapula. And then it also arises from the outer lip of your ilia crest. So we can basically see that on our specimen right here. So it arises from up here. You can see right about here. So T7 straight down to L5. It also arises from the, look right here, it's pretty easy. It also arises from the 
inferior angle of your scapula as well as the outer lip of the iliac crest and the thoracolumbar fascia and it goes to insert in your floor of your bicipital groove it inserts in the floor of your bicipital groove so let me show you where that is so remember we said the pectoralis major in inserts in the lateral lip of your humerus so guess what here is the floor so here we have lateral lip medial lip and here we have the floor or the bicipital groove so the latissim latissimus dorsi look it travels all the way from around here and go all the way there the inserts in the floor of your bicipital group so remember lateral lip pectoralis major and the floor or the groove or the little hole or depression is for your latissimus dorsi and it's supplied by the thoracodorsal nerve and you know where that is if you know your brachial plexus it's from the posterior cord of your brachial plexus other muscles include rhomboid major and minor these are not shown here but i'll just give you guys a little pop-up with it and the rhomboid major and minor um they basically get nerve supply from the dorsal scapular nerve if you know your brachial plexus you know that this is coming from root c5 so you need to know your brachial plexus know about rhomboid major rhomboid minor and we're going to go back now to another muscle this is one of my favorite muscles, and it's serratus anterior i like it because it looks super cool so this right here can you see that oh it's so cute is the serratus anterior so the serratus anterior muscle arises from the upper eight rib so it's digitation from the upper eight rib so you can see that right there and it goes to insert in the medial border of the costal surface of your scapula so here if it arises from these you'd expect it to insert right there so this is the medial border of the costal surface of your scapula when we say costal we mean ribs we're talking about the ribs so that's it for serratus anterior the origin is from the upper eight digitation and it inserts in the medial border on the costal surface of your scapula and the nerve supply to your serratus anterior is a long thoracic nerve of bell so the long thoracic nerve of bell if this gets damage what can you get you can get winging of your scapula and if you know your brachial plexus again you know that the long thoracic nerve of bell comes from c5 c6 and c7 so remember all oh, let's review all the muscles we did today so i did pectoralis major it's and then i did pectoralis minor we couldn't see it because it's under the cover of pectoralis major so pectoralis major pectoralis minor then subclavius is also on the cover then we did trapezius this beautiful muscle right there then we moved on to the latissimus dorsi mm -hmm. And then we just moved on to the rhomboid major and minor that we couldn't see on this one, but I'll give you guys a pop-up of them. And then we did the serratus anterior right here. And it's my favorite muscle. So now that you guys know the origin, the insertions of the muscle, that's it for our muscle anatomy video today. I hope you guys have a better understand of what, understanding of what is going on. And don't forget to drop your, com your questions in the comment section below. So until next time, thank you so much for watching guys. Bye.